Hey guys, what's going on? This is Pixie the Bug, or Danny, whichever you feel like calling me today. Um, I missed last week, that's because it was Halloween, and believe me, we were way too busy for me to have time to, to post anything. So, I am hanging out today, well we are hanging out today, in Delaware. We're going to hang out with the Selbyville Swamp Monster. Now a lot of people have already debunked the smith but some people are still talking about it like it's a thing but we can talk about it just because i, I found it so it, it looks kind of like a i think i put up the image there we go like a big random monster kind of like a bigfoot kind of a thing i guess that seems to be a a pretty uh common thing is Bigfoot. Oh, look at this. Look at this. It's supposed to be a stuffed animal. <laughs> That's cute. Excuse my voice today, guys. My I have allergies and apparently didn't think to uh, take it before I recorded, which seems to be a big thing for me. Um, this is we're on Facebook. This is called Monsters Genesis. It's actually a Facebook page. I kind of like their thing here. It's pretty cool. So, the Selbyville Swamp Monster. Two raccoon hunters walked through the Great Cypress Swamp of Selbyville, Delaware in the 1920s and found something unexpected. The hunters knew something was wrong when their dogs froze, but they didn't expect what they encountered next. They heard something screaming, and this horrible noise started coming toward them. Author Andy Nudez told the newspaper Coastal Point. Rather than fire on what it was, they backed away. Something large and heavy continued to follow them, snapping through the branches as it came. I don't know why you wouldn't shoot at that. I mean, if you're a hunter and you got a gun and something is coming at you, why wouldn't you shoot it? But The hunters encountered the Selbyville Swamp Monster, a large, hairy, hulking beast, which... Looks kind of icky right there. An editor of the Delmarva News, Ralph Grapperhaus, claimed he created the Selbyville Swamp Monster as a hoax in the 1960s. And dressed friend Fred Stevens in a hairy costume Stevens used to terrify motorists on Route 54. And Grapperhaus printed stories of swamp monster hunts in the Delmarva Del News. Stevens revealed his part in the hoax in 1987. He'd stopped dressing as the monster after a few months as hunts for the creature became common and he feared for his life. That makes sense. However, Stevens' claims don't account for the encounters since the 1920s or those that continued long after he hung up his costume. So, he created this monster just to mess with people. And then he stopped it in the 1960s. Wait. It started in the 1960s. He revealed his part in it in 1980s. So like 27 years later-ish. But this thing has been cited since the 1920s. So. I don't know. Think Think of it what you will, I guess. This thing doesn't go completely towards just Selbyville. It's about all the monsters. This is the Toby Kadachi. Um, sounds like something from a video game. The Toby Kadachi. I, f I think that that's in the... Monster Hunter, maybe? I mean, that's what it looks like. Dive in a Monster Hunter world. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That's why it sounds like Monster Hunter. <laughs> Um, there's some cryptids. I'm not going to go through them. Well, I mean, there's the Flatwoods monster. We've heard of that. We were going through West Virginia towards um, Florida, and we heard about the Flatwoods monster, but we didn't stop anywhere. <clears throat> My parents aren't into this kind of thing. The Jersey Devils in New Jersey, obviously. I've heard about him. He's pretty popular, the Jersey Devil. Here's another moth man. He just looks like a thing with wings. So, um, around here, which is in Selbyville, this is from the Daily Times of 2005. 
Around here, everybody calls it the burn swamp because of the fires, said Scott Collins, Selbyville chief of police and local history buff. But it's probably even more famous around here for the swamp monster sightings. Um, it's been spotted many occasions and photographed many times. The first such frightening photo of a tall Yeti-like creature menacing the innocent with its damp fur and swamp breath appeared for the first time in what was then the Delmarva News on April 26th of 1964. So, uh, it's apparently the Great Cypress Swamp in Sussex County. It's become more swamp than cypress, but conservation efforts have since the 1970s kept the area out of use. Most of it is not usable because it's swamp, obviously, but the state is trying to preserve what is left of it. Private clubs rent out parts of it for hunting, but for the most part, people just don't go back there. Um, again, for a good reason, the ghost of the Selbyville Swamp Monster probably still haunts the burnt swamp. Um, so apparently there was a big fire in the swamp at some point, which is an interesting thought, because if you know what swamps are, they're basically just wetland. It's all mostly water. And uh, mosquitoes, if you live down in Florida, they've got alligators there. It's it's a wetland. So it, it said it's it was set on fire and the legend started a burnt swamp. So at some point um, it was 50,000 acres but now it's about 73 miles-ish, according to this. So they figure that whatever it was that was still there, it might still haunt the place. Because it probably, if the fire was that large, probably didn't survive that kind of fire. Which is interesting. I don't have very much else left. This is called Swamp Creatures. This is apparently the swamp. Um, oh, found mainly in the southeastern coastal plain along river streams or ponds. It's just telling you what a swamp is. I didn't look through this before I grabbed it. Um, the spirit of an old shingle maker called the Subbyville Swamp Monster who died in the infamous fire still haunts the edge of the swamp. Oh, I'll be waiting for you. Okay, Dad. Sorry, guys. Of course he has to talk to me in the middle of it. Not to mention talk of the mysterious phantom of a young girl dressed in a flowing white gown lurking around Delaware Route 54, carrying her head in her hands. So this, it's not the only thing haunting the swamp. That's gross, though. So I wonder what the young girl had happened to her that she carries her head in her hands. Obviously beheaded, but gross. Um... <clears throat> I have a few minutes here, so I'm going to show... Over 50 years ago, a Delaware urban legend came to life. For years, mm. residents in Selbyville in Sussex County had heard about a swamp monster. For a brief time, it became all too real. We finally got to the bottom of the tale last spring in our first Delaware special. Oh. Don't enter. There are places and, and things there that you don't want to see and don't want to experience. Who, what, when, and where can all be explained? But ever take a look around Delaware, shake your head and wonder? Exhibit A, Fred Stevens. Back in the 1920s, people started reporting hearing screams at night when they were out in the Cypress swamps, just west of Fenwick Island. Out to the coast of Maryland, that's not too far. Some started claiming they not only heard screams, but they were chased by a big hairy creature. They heard tree branches snapping, and they would run for their lives. It hit a fever pitch in 1964. I'm Fred Stevens. I was a swamp monster 50 years ago. Having oh, how's that guy? Tales of the swamp monster, Fred, then 21 years old, decided to cash in on the local legend, literally. 
At the encouragement of his friend, local newspaper employee He's Ralph Grapperhouse Fred created a swamp <laughs> monster costume using his Aunt Dorothy's <laughs> raccoon fur coat, all with newspaper sales in mind. And then jump out on them, you know. And some of them were quit before they got up to me. You know, back down the road. The sure says yeah. Swamp Monster, the man, the, the myth, the legend. The <laughs> got dirtier. Some people come back and they threw chickens. You know, toward me and all, you know, but feed me, I guess. I don't know. But the... So that's the guy who, who started the stories of the Swamp Monster. But they're saying that it actually started in like the 1920s. And he started to dress up as him in like the 1960s or something. If you want to finish watching it, it's from somebody called Chicken Parm. Um, a piece I shot in 2014 where after 50 years, the mystery behind these 1964 sightings of the Selbyville Swamp Monster in Delaware was revealed. So that, that must be Chicken Parm right there, maybe? I don't know. Look at that. Look at that weapon. That's cool. It's got like a freaking club to it. But, um... I'm going to leave it here. You can watch the rest of it. It's three minutes long. We watched three minutes and 22 seconds long. And we watched a minute 50. So if you want to watch the rest of it, feel free. Um, this is just Selbyville itself. We already saw it. It's down there near Maryland. And then the Facebook thing. I'm running through this. We're going to head to, to church. That's why I'm rushing. Um, I wasn't planning on going to church, but... Uh, there's the music scene, you know, about the Selbyville Swamp Monster and the Black Widow Spiders of Lower Delaware. That's gross. I don't, it looks like a decaying dog. <laughs> um, DE Center for Inland Bay's Post. Um, they're looking to plant over 500 trees, blah, blah, blah. It says, catch a glimpse of the Legendary Selbyville Swamp Monster, who some think still haunts these woods. Um, there's a couple things there, but I don't think there's anything. There's Delaware Beach Towns. That's, that's really into it on here. Um, so that's it, guys. That's the Selbyville Swamp Monster. That is Delaware. And uh, next week, next Sunday, we'll be going to Florida and hanging out with a skunk ape. That's an interesting one. Didn't know it existed. So um, we went to Florida this past spring for Disney for the first time in years. So uh, I wonder where it's at. But we'll get into that next week, guys. If you're interested, like, subscribe. And ding the bell so that you can watch the rest of the stuff that I'm doing. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you later. Have a good week. Bye.